Warning, there is a good chance Bitcoin Mike has no idea what he's talking about. Do your own research. Enjoy the show. Thank you. Hey, folks, let's take a quick look at the markets. Uh, Bitcoin was pretty much hanging out at about 19,000 when I last checked. Seeing a little bit more uh, bullishness in some altcoins, but that's only because the stock market is uh, pumping. The stock market's up by 500 points today. So, not too much going on with crypto. I mean, crypto just wants to hang out, or Bitcoin just wants to hang out at 19,000 right now. Um, I mean, I feel like we've been here for like the last eight months. It's kind of crazy. But, um, was watching this interview, you know, everybody's asking, is it a good time to buy Bitcoin? Should you be buying Bitcoin? Should you be buying crypto? What should I do? And like, really, like I've been saying for the last couple months, if you have no crypto, absolutely, the last six months, you should be buying the dips. If you already have a ton of crypto, just wait for a really big dip. Um, of course, you know, for me, I'm looking to get Cardano at 25 cents because I've been buying it between 60 cents and 40 cents, and my next level is 25. If Bitcoin goes down to 10,000, I'll be buying it, but I'm not going to buy any right now at 19,000. But if you don't have any Bitcoin, well, this is not a bad time to be stocking up because if you're waiting for the for lower prices and you have nothing, there's a good chance we might not get there. Everybody right now is waiting for a $12,000 Bitcoin. Everybody's waiting for a 25 cent Cardano. Everybody's waiting for an $800 Ethereum. Will we get those prices? I don't know, maybe. But there's no guarantee. And that's kind of what Arthur Hayes uh, was saying. He was on banter today. Occasionally, banter gets some good guests. And he was asked that question. Uh, is now a good time to be buying uh, Bitcoin? Start at the current short-term rate. Um, would you be buying? Would you, would you start buying Bitcoin now? And I think what I'm alluding to is, do you think that there is long-term value in Bitcoin? And do you think that we're close enough to the bottom to actually be buying it? So I think if you... I, have, I already own Bitcoin. I already own Bitcoin and now it's like, do I want more? And I would say, I'm going to wait because I'm going to trade it a bit. I, I think there's going to be an event and the Fed's going to tell us when, okay, the dollar liquidity situation is going to reverse and then it'll make a lot of sense. Now, does that mean that Bitcoin hasn't pre-traded that and maybe it's 25,000 and it's not 20,000? Maybe, but I'm okay. I'm already, I'm already invested, so I don't care. Like, okay, I missed out on, uh, on, a, bit of, on a bit of upside whatever, I'm, I'm still participating anyways in my portfolio. If you don't have Bitcoin and, you know, sort of these non US dollar liquidity arguments resonate with you about worrying about whether or not you're gonna have access to your wealth or you or the ways in which you're gonna be able to safeguard your wealth against inflation or financial repression are gonna be heavily constricted in, in the very near future, then the time was yesterday. Just buy something. The price doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the price, the price is because when you need it, you won't be able to buy it. And so then it's irrelevant with the prices. And so I think that's sort of the situation where people should, you know, take a look at um, where they are. How, how do you separate huge conviction in this space? Okay, so basically, that's, that's what the smart money is basically saying. That's what everybody's saying. If you don't have any crypto, yeah, great time to buy. If you do have crypto, wait for a giant dump. Um, and that's what I'm doing. And we're just not getting that giant dump. You know, every day I wake up and I say, well, am I able to get my Cardano for 25 cents? And it never happens. It always, it always pumps. It always hits 43 cents and goes back up to 45 cents or, 40, or not 40, 35 cents, 34 cents. I wish we were at 45 cents, but we were at 45 cents a couple weeks ago. So yeah, I mean, we're just not getting there, but I've been buying all the way down folks. And um, that's what you do in these bear markets. Found this article, um, Cardano, Uniswap, other altcoins, record large short positions. So basically, we know what happens when everybody takes out short positions on all these cryptos, right? Well, eventually there's a short squeeze and we get a giant pump. Not saying that's going to happen or anytime soon, but a lot more people are shorting the markets. The shorts are building up. Um, and I would say a short, a short squeeze is inevitable at some point. So remember, folks, nothing goes down forever. You know, no matter what you think, even a dead project doesn't go down forever. So we've been down for a long time. Bitcoin, a lot of these altcoins are due for a short squeeze or a pump. Um, we might not get it until after we have that capitulation candle, that capitulation sell-off where Bitcoin goes down to 12, 15,000. But at some point in the next few months, we're gonna get, we're gonna get some bullishness in crypto. I mean, it doesn't go down forever. So remember that. Okay, 
Here's an interesting story. Bitcoin's volatility falls below NASDAQ and, and uh, S&P 500 for the first time since 2020. So basically at this point, the stock market is more volatile than crypto and Bitcoin, which is really interesting. And it makes sense. And that's kind of how crypto gets, it's one way crypto can get people out of the market. Now, price dipping gets people out of the market. The bear markets get people out, scares out the retail money and just boredom. You know, Bitcoin at 19,000, Bitcoin's been at 19,000 for a while, what, six months? Ever since we had that big Terra Luna dump, we went down. I had so many people texting me all the time about crypto, even at 19,000. Oh, it's, should I buy now? It's great. Oh, this is going to be great. Those people don't text me anymore. They haven't texted me in months. The dumb money, and I hate to say it, and, and dumb money doesn't mean you're dumb. Dumb money just means you don't have a grasp on the market. Look, you have to live through these Bitcoin cycles to be smart money. You know, when I got into crypto in 2017, 2018, I was dumb money. I didn't know what I was doing. I learned a lot since then. I too got out of the market somewhat um, during these bear markets. I tried to trade out of it. I would go from Litecoin to Cardano, then back to Litecoin, then to Bitcoin, and the Polymatic. Like, I was all over the place. I couldn't figure out. I was losing money. Like, I, I, I chase pumps. Like, oh, oh. You know, Polymatic's pumping. Let me, let me get out of my Cardano. I'll go into Polymatic. Then as soon as I get in there, Cardano starts pumping. I lost thousands of dollars doing that. Thousands. But that's what the dumb money does. And also, I got to the point, uh, especially after COVID, um, the COVID dump, where I just like lost interest for a while. Like I just had all my wallet. I'm like, okay, I'll just save it and I'll look back in a few months. And I missed, you know, and I had a lot of money on the side that if I just left in the market at those lows, I would have made a lot more money. So dumb money doesn't mean you're dumb, although it can mean you're dumb because there are a lot of people in my life who I would consider to be dumb money and dumb. <laughs> but, um, you know, dumb money doesn't mean you're dumb. It just means you're new to the market and you have, you have to live through one of these cycles to get it. Um, now I get it because I've lived through one of these cycles. I know what's going to happen. I mean, there's no guarantees in life, but I'm pretty darn sure that the next Bitcoin happening, we're going to have another crypto bull run and a lot of the coins that I'm investing in are going to go absolutely freaking bananas crazy. Okay. Um, cause that's just what's ha That's just what's happened in crypto over the last 13 years. And that's just the way it goes. Also looking at the way the markets are right now with, with the uh, recession, with the way the Fed is raising interest rates, it just all makes sense. Everything is going to line up perfectly to 2024. Stock market's coming out, the Fed pivots, and we're coming into that Bitcoin happening. And we just we're, we're going to rip so freaking hard. I'm actually very, very bullish. I think this crypto bull run coming up may be one of the biggest um, bull markets in crypto, like we've seen in years because so many people are out of the markets. So they're out of traditional markets. They're getting out of real estate markets. They're getting out of gold. They're getting out of silver um, and they're getting out of crypto. People are just taking their money out because they're scared. Well, what are, what are all those people going to do when things, when the markets turn around, they're going to just fly right back in. And I see really interesting things happening. I'm just so excited for it. I mean, like I'm almost kind of like the point now where it's like, I'm getting a little impatient because like, I know it's another year or whatever, but it just, I mean, it keeps me up at night. I think about it. I just can't sleep thinking like what, how crazy it's going to be when the money starts flying back in. Here's from Elon Musk. Um, 2020, he thinks the global recession may last until near 2024, near the Bitcoin happening. This is what I've been saying, folks. And um, I think I was, I think you watched my YouTube channel. I was talking about this for the last three months. So it's always nice when I say something and then Elon Musk says it a few months later. It makes me feel smart, even though I'm not that smart. I'm just a regular dude. But um, this global recession will most likely last most of 2023. Eventually, the Fed's going to pivot, maybe in three to six months. People will start putting back money into the markets. The Fed will pivot. Then the Fed will pivot again. And then eventually, we're, everybody's flowing back into the markets. We're near the Bitcoin um, halvening of 2024. Or it might be, it might actually be the end of 2023. They keep changing the timeline and, and crypto is going to go crazy. Stocks are going to go crazy. Gold is even going to go crazy. So this is so exciting. This is so exciting to me. Like, and I love, we have, you know, like I said, Elon Musk. He's saying the same thing, folks. He probably has double, triple, you know, double my IQ. You know, if my IQ is 110, his is like, what, 200? <laughs> so I'm just a regular guy. So that's what the smart money is doing. I always say, if you're not that smart, if you're just a regular guy like me and everybody else, follow what the smart people are doing. And that's that's how you make it, folks. That's how you make it. So we have, yeah, we probably have another year of this shit. 
And when we get that capitulation in Bitcoin and crypto, we're like, you just see a flash crash. Bitcoin, 18,000. Oh my God, we're down to 15,000. Oh my God, the, the altcoins are dropping 30, 40% in a day. What the hell? It's all over. You know how many people sell during those flash crashes? And this is how it works in a flash crash. Cardano's, Cardano's at 35 cents. It, it, it's down to 26 cents. Everybody in Cardano gets out. Oh my God, it's over. It's gone to zero. The minute you hit the sell button, five minutes later, it's back up to 50 cents. Been there, done that. Been there, done that. And that's what the dumb money does. Then they have to buy back in at 50 cents. Then, then all the dumb money has been flushed out of Bitcoin, Cardano, and your favorite altcoin. Once all that dumb money is completely flushed out, a new group comes in and we go up. But a lot, of the, a lot of the thing that raises the price on these cryptos is just people who have sold and they have to like chase it back in. And it's the worst feeling. I've been there and I'm just never, I'm never going to let myself get to that point again because it just sucks. Yeah, folks, don't sell during a flash crash. If you want to get a card on it right now on Bitcoin and never look at this, these, this again, that's great. Go do it. But please don't sell during a flash crash because that's the worst thing you can do. Okay. Found this article. Um, and it's kind of funny. Like, well, it's talking about Litecoin and uh, nobody talks about Litecoin anymore. I think I might be the only YouTuber who talks about Litecoin. Um, and people just don't understand that all of the big funds hold Litecoin. And the reason a lot of people don't talk about Litecoin is, of course, the last, um, the last bull market. Well, let's go back to the, the, the 2017 bull market. Litecoin killed it. It basically pulled a Cardano. It went up like 20, 30x. It did great. But the bull market of last, which was what, 2019, Litecoin basically, I think, went from like $40 to like $350 or it was like $30 or $350. So it was like 30 then and this was like a 5, 8, it was like an 8 or 9x or something like that. And all the degenerates, that's not good enough. And there's not a lot of hype behind it. But you have to remember, it's a safe bet. All of the big funds, every, every big fund... Um, that's involved with crypto, every single one of them holds Litecoin and they hold a lot of Litecoin. Um, Litecoin's involved with PayPal. You can lose, you can use Litecoin on some, um, to pay on PayPal and there's some other uh, payment processors that use Litecoin. And here's an article basically saying these two altcoins will explode. Whales are accumulating massive stacks. And I believe that. Now they're talking about Chainlink. But I don't, and I'll be honest with you guys, I don't know a lot about Chainlink. It never like interests me. So I'm not going to talk too much about Chainlink, but According to this article, it's a good deal. But Litecoin has been gaining more compared to Bitcoin um, because of increased whale activity. Lately, two altcoins are growing in prominence, serving as an attractive investment option compared to Bitcoin. The biggest cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, has endured some selling pressure recently. This pressure has pushed BTC to move closer to 19,000. However, two altcoins are now growing in attention due to emerging address activity. You have to remember, folks, Litecoin is decentralized. Charlie Lee was behind it, but he pretty much sold. If Charlie Lee dropped dead tomorrow, I don't even think it would affect the Litecoin. It's a decentralized project. It's basically just like Bitcoin. It's a carbon copy of Bitcoin, but he tweaked it to make it faster. It's been around for over 10 years. It's not going to go to zero. I've been, you know, I'm not going to try to shill Litecoin too much, but because I, I held a lot of Litecoin. I held too much Litecoin last bull market and, I, and it kind of like screwed up some of my ROI. I wish I had more in Cardano and more in some other projects. But if you're looking for a safe bet, I think Litecoin is it. You just really, co you really just can't go wrong. They have the Mimble Wimble coming out. All the funds hold it. And I think we're probably, I think next bull market, we're going to see a five to $600 uh, Litecoin. So you can ten, you'll be you'll be able to what is it, 10, 15 x or something like that. Not too shabby for a, you know a coin that's not not going to go to zero and it's not a shilling sleazy coin. Um, your big YouTubers like uh, Crypto Banter, Carl the Moon, um, Bitboy Crypto, you know all the guys I say to keep away from. They're not shilling it because they're not getting paid. And they, they, it's such a big, the market cap's so big on Litecoin, they just can't pump it. They just can't. It's not, it's not a new shining object. All the scammer YouTubers, they only basically talk about the, the new shiny object. And Litecoin is old. Litecoin's an old man now like me, you know? So it's lost some of its luster. Litecoin is like a woman, <laughs> a woman who's, you know, came, to, like Pamela Anderson. 
you know, Litecoin was like the Baywatch Pamela Anderson, like, uh, <laughs> like uh, what, 10 years ago. And then 10 years after, Pamela Anderson's like 40. She's still beautiful. She's still doing TV shows. She still looks great in a bathing suit. Um, she's probably even more beautiful to a lot of people, but she's not that shiny object anymore. Man, I'm showing my age talking about Pamela Anderson. And I know she's like an old lady now, but I'm just saying, man, back in the day, uh, you know, Baywatch, that was just awesome. Those were the good old days. Anyway, folks, that's pretty much what's going on. You know, it's kind of a boring day, I'll be honest with you. There hasn't been much. It's boring. Boredom is going to flush a lot of people out of the market. We need another flush. You know, a lot of what I talk about is sentiment, the feeling. Do I feel that depression? Do I feel depressed? Do I look around and I just see, oh, everybody's miserable? We're getting close, but we need to get to a suicidal level in these markets. And I think, I think a Cardano at 25 cents, a Bitcoin under 17,000, even like, like 12,000, it's like, if Bitcoin were to hit $12,000, every article would say Bitcoin's going to zero. Just like what happened during COVID. Every article, oh, Bitcoin's done, it's going to zero, Cardano's going to zero, crypto's over, crypto's a scam. I'm not seeing those articles just yet. I'm seeing some, but I'm not seeing enough. So we'll get there. And I know it's like kind of shitty. We'll get there. But, but you have to have that flush out where all the dumb money just goes, oh, and they leave. And then they come back when the price goes up. So I'm kind of waiting for that. And, we're, it's, and I think it's going to come. It doesn't have to come. We could go up from here. The bottom of Cardano could be 30 cents. The bottom for Bitcoin could be that 18,000, 17,000. And that's it. But I think we just need a flash. And we haven't had a good flash crash since the Luna crash. And that was like, what, eight months ago at this point? We need another fresh flash crash, bad news. Putin did something real nasty and dirty. Um, the Fed does something horrible. The numbers come out and like the economy is like in shambles. The real estate market has imploded. Everybody's going to die. That's what we need. We need something like that. Um, and then we get that flush out. I have my money on the side. I'm going to deploy it. Like I said, I'm not buying any more Cardano until it hits 25 cents. Probably maybe 26 cents because so many people are waiting for 25. I'm not buying any more Theta until it hits like maybe like 75 cents if it gets there. And Bitcoin, I will buy one Bitcoin if it hits $12,000. Um, but I just don't, I think too many people are waiting for 12,000. I think, I think for Bitcoin, you're more looking at like 14, 15,000 range. But who knows? But we need a little bit more pain. And like Tone Vase says, will that pain just be we stay here for another year at 19,000 and people get so bored? Because boredom is painful too. Boredom is painful. Maybe that'll be the pain. But I'd rather just see a flush out next week or next month. Oh my God, it's over. And then we come up. All right, folks, like and subscribe. Thank you for the new subscribers. Um, like I said, folks, you know, no matter what the price, if Bitcoin goes down to 5,000, if Cardano goes down to 10 cents, I'm still going to be here making videos. Um, even if I'm completely wrong about everything, I'm still going to make videos. You know, take everything with a grain of salt that people say on YouTube. I'm just basically giving my experience what I've seen over the last couple of years. I have a lot of money now invested in crypto because I believe in it. I believe in what it can do, um, especially in these uh, these bull markets. And now I, the one thing I learned in crypto, you got to be buying in the bear market if you want to make any money in the bull market. You have to. So we're going to ride this wave together and hopefully in a year, we, uh, we come out of this shit and we are, uh, we're riding high. All right, like and subscribe. Thank you for the new subscribers and uh, I'll talk to you guys later.